I think in terms of technology in a rural setting, we don't get a lot of different technology, so um, it was really exciting to hear about the augmented reality. I know our kids would love it, so it was a really good opportunity for them. Conversations that we're starting to have at a rural school around using Minecraft in language, it was almost like, like how, how have we not thought of this before? So I guess it's a blending of new culture with, with the old culture and finding that balance. You see it on TV, you don't see it for real. Um, not in Eidsvold. And to see the, the students getting involved and looking so in depth with what they're doing, I thought, well, obviously it is the way to go. We love Minecraft! The story that we chose for our challenge is um, the story of a local area, Ban Ban Springs. There's a, a Dreamtime story for this area, but there's also what's happening in the modern times where it's actually gone dry and there's a lot of pollution being next to the highway. Way back when we first started with our uh, Aboriginal language, my main thoughts and, and wants were to get language out there. But to share in this way, yeah, I didn't think it was possible. And to see it actually starting to come together, I'm in awe of it. I'm just totally shocked and I want to be a part of it, but I don't want to be a part of it because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> my father's Aboriginal and my mother's non-Indigenous, so we grew up with the best of both worlds. And I guess my philosophy around that is um, around the household I grew up in and that common respect for culture and kind of just tried to replicate that at the school and have a, have a family feel. I think once the community and once the school start engaging, getting to know more about it, I think we'll probably want more. There are other things, you know, not just with language, there are other things we can do with technologies.